Math 31, welcome to example three. We're gonna take a look at the three different types of linear systems. So there are three types of linear systems of two equations. And again, when we talk about two equations, we're talking about two by twos. All right, the first one is the inconsistent system. There are times when I'll give you a system of equations and the lines are parallel, all right? Meaning that one line does not intersect the other line, and then the solution set of that system is empty, meaning that there is no ordered pair that satisfies that system of equations. And that's a little bit more rare, all right? That doesn't happen as often. The consistent version, this is the one that happens the most often. Usually two lines intersect at one point. So in a consistent system, the lines intersect in one point. The solution of the system is an ordered pair that corresponds to that point. And so this is, again, most common option. Let's just write that in here. Most, that's an arrow. All right, the most common option. And we saw this in example one and two. So example one and two are consistent systems. Oops systems. All right. So I would say nine out of 10 times you do a problem, it's going to be a consistent system. So there are times though, when you don't have a parallel, don't have parallel lines, you don't have intersecting lines, but you have something called a dependent system. And this one is when I give you a system of equations, I give you two equations and the lines are actually identical, meaning one is a multiple of the other. And you just might not see it initially but the algebra will present itself. So when the lines are identical, it means the solution set is the set of infinite number of, excuse me, the solution set is the set of infinite number of solutions represented by points on the same line. So what that means is if I drew one line, right? And then I redrew that same line over again, those two lines that I drew, they overlap because they're the same line. So every point on one line is automatically a point on the second line because those lines are the same. So there are infinitely many solutions and namely it's all the points on that line. Okay, so with that we've got inconsistent, consistent, dependent. No solution, one solution, infinitely many solutions. So these two solution sets aren't too tough to write out. These are a little bit more obnoxious because you actually need to write the equation of the line. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, in example one and two, we saw consistent systems. So in example three, I'm gonna give you a version of an inconsistent and a dependent. And I want you to see algebraically what happens because this is graphically what's going on. One of the systems in example three is inconsistent, meaning we're, if we were gonna graph them, we had parallel lines. One of the systems in example three is dependent, meaning if we were gonna graph the two lines, they would be the same line. So I want you to see how the algebra is about to match those graphs. So let me go ahead and scooch this way up, all right, so that we have some room to work this. All right, so we've got new systems now. But again, just taking note, we'll solve these, but these are two by twos. So anything's on the table. If you wanna try and solve these via substitution, great. I'm gonna go with elimination. But really both, especially with this one, actually both of them, substitution and elimination are, are equally simple in, the, in these, uh, for these systems. And I say that because elimination isn't gonna be too bad because all I'll have to do is multiply this equation by negative two and this one by negative one. Substitution isn't bad because I, I see that I have a coefficient of one in front of both the x and y here and in front of the y here. So it wouldn't be too terrible to to use substitution. But like I said, let me go ahead and multiply this by negative two. And I'm opting for negative two because I have positive two here. So I would like this coefficient to become a negative two so those variables will eliminate. So if I do this, that means I will have negative two x minus two y is equal to negative four. And here I will have two x plus two y is equal to positive four. Now when I add those, all of a sudden everything eliminates. I get zero on the left side and I get zero on the right side. And then I would ask you, like, when is zero equal to zero? Well, zero is always equal to zero. This is an inherently true statement. 
This is always true. All right, and what that's trying to tell us is that these two lines are the same line. So any ordered pair that is on this line is automatically on this line. And we're looking at a version of dependent, a dependent system. So this is a dependent system. It's dependent because it's saying no matter what ordered pair you use for x and y, as long as it fits into one line, it's always going to fit into the other line because this is an inherently true statement. So this is a dependent system, which means we have infinitely many solutions. And it's technically, if we want to write the solution setup, we would say it's the set of all ordered pairs such that x plus y is equal to 2. And let's make sure we're clear on this notation. When you put these squiggles here, right, we're talking about the set. We're talking about x comma y, so this is ordered pairs. So this is the set of all ordered pairs x, y. This vertical bar means such that. So such that x plus y is equal to 2, meaning I'm on this first line. You also could have written here 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. But is, if there's an ordered pair that's on this line, it's automatically in the second line. So let, let's come up with a couple. What's an ordered pair that adds up to 2? I, I could think of 1 comma 1, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. Well, let's check this out. If we plug 1, 1 into the second equation, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. That checks out. All right, try a different ordered pair. What's another combo that would work? Well, what if x was 0 and y was 2? 0 plus 2 is 2. All right, let's plug in 0, 2 to the second equation. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay, that works out also, and it should. All right, um, we could try something like negative 1, 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. All right. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. So I hope you're starting to see that any ordered pair that is on this first line is automatically on this second line. And that's because if you were to put this in y equals mx plus b, this is the line y is equal to negative x plus 2. If you solve this one for y, I'm still going to get y is equal to negative x plus 2. These are the same line. So whatever ordered pair is on this line, it's automatically on this second line because they're multiples of one another. All right, dependent system. You arrive at an equation that is inherently true whenever that happens, when you get something like 3 equals 3, 0 equals 0, x equals x. You have a dependent system. All right, let's look at this other version over here. I'm going to see, well, these are the same order. They're the same magnitude of 2, but they have the same sign. I want them to have opposite signs, so I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 1. I could have multiplied the bottom equation by negative 1 also, but I've got negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 5, and I will add to it 2x plus y being equal to 8. When I add these up, right, this eliminates. I get 0 here and I get 3 here. Well, this is an inherently false statement, right? This is never true. All right, this is a foul lie. Zero is not equal to three. So what that's trying to tell you is that any ordered pair on this first line will never be on this second line. They never overlap. They never intersect because this is an inconsistent system. All right, so we would say there are no solutions to this inconsistent system. All right. It's easier to write up the solution set when it's inconsistent. And if you were to take a look at these lines and make them or put them in slope intercept form, this is y is equal to negative 2x plus 5, and this is y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. These are parallel lines, right? They're never going to intersect, which is why we're seeing no solution. So when you have a dependent system, it means you'll arrive, once you do your algebra, either elimination or substitution, you'll arrive at an equation that's inherently true. It's always true. That's the algebra way of saying, hey, I've got a dependent system. On the flip of that, 
If you arrive, after you do your algebra, your elimination or your substitution, if you arrive at something that's inherently false, that means you have an inconsistent system. Okay? All right, so with that, we're going to flip to the next page, and the next few examples are going to be all word problems. Hooray! All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.